Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, At Home with Willowberry. Or if you're new, welcome. But where have you been? I'm so happy to see you here. My name is Valerie, and in today's video, we're busy doing all the things. It's time to pack up the living room, we visit with my fur babies, and we're grilling steaks out for dinner. So if you're interested, I hope you'll stick around and enjoy the video. How are you all doing today? I hope all is well in your part of the world. We're doing great. We're all happy, healthy, and excited for our upcoming move. We're in the process of moving out of our rental and into our forever home. We've been living in this single wide mobile home rental for about a year now. My husband retired last year and we sold our townhouse in Northern Virginia. We knew we wanted to move to the mountains, but we weren't sure exactly where. So we thought the best thing would be to move into a rental here in the mountains so we could take our time to go house hunting. But now it's time for us to move on. We found our forever home, but it's a fixer upper and we're very anxious to get moved in so we can get started on the renovations. Monday was Memorial Day and Tim bought us some New York strip steaks to cook out for the holiday, but it was raining, so we decided to wait and cook out today when it was dry outside. It's mid-morning, so I'm going to go ahead and prep dinner for tonight. I want to season the steaks and then wash the sweet potatoes so I can wrap them with aluminum foil. Once I'm finished prepping dinner, then I'll be ready to get busy packing up the living room. To season the steaks, I'll be using salt, pepper, and this buttery steakhouse rub that Tim found at Costco. Once the steaks are seasoned on both sides, then I'll wrap them with foil and place them back in the fridge until we're ready to grill them later this evening. For the sweet potatoes, I'm just going to wash them in cold water and then wrap them in foil. That way, when I'm ready to bake them, they'll be ready to just throw in the oven.
right, well, dinner is prepped, so now I'm ready to go get this living room packed up. I started packing the other day, so I already have a few boxes stacked up in the living room. We're headed back to the new house next week to bring a load of boxes to put in storage. As I'm packing, I'm trying to decide what can go to the storage unit for a few months and what I'm going to need at the house. Unfortunately, we'll be living in the new house while we're renovating it, so I only want to bring the absolute necessities. I just haven't quite figured out what that is yet. I know I'll need a few kitchen items like pots and pans, a cookie sheet, mixing bowls, the skillet and air fryer. We'll also need our toiletries, some clothes, cleaning supplies, and a first aid kit. I think everything else can go into storage. I don't know why I'm stressing out about this so much. The storage unit is close enough that if I need anything, it's just a short drive to go get it. can't believe I just broke that hurricane glass shade. It fell right off the lamp base and shattered everywhere. We've had that hurricane lamp forever. We used to have two of them, but the second one got broken our last move a year ago. At least I didn't break the actual lamp. It was just a shade, and that could be easily replaced. And if that's all that gets broken, well, that would be a miracle.
Hey, Max. Look at that sweet boy. This is one of his favorite spots. He loves to sit on the back of the couch and stare out the window. He wants to run free so bad. He's gotten out the door a few times, and every time it scares me to death. He's a runner, and he won't stop or come back when called. When he gets out, he stays gone for hours, and I worry the whole time. When we first got Max, he was used to running free around the trailer park, but it's not safe. We live near a busy road, and there are big dogs all around us. The boys walk him several times a day, but he'd rather be free from the leash. So when we move into the new house, we plan to install an invisible dog fence so that he can run all around the yard all he wants, but he won't be able to run away and get lost. I just hope it works. All right, back to packing. I tell you what, I'm going to miss living in this old trailer park. I've really enjoyed our time here. I know the trailer was a wreck and most people probably would have walked away, but I'm glad we stuck it out. We've met a lot of great people here in this little old town. Everyone is so friendly and helpful, and I gained a lot of knowledge and experience while fixing up the mobile home, which will help us when we're renovating our own mobile home. I'm so ready to move into our forever home and to start raising some farm animals and growing vegetables. But I'll always have fond memories of our time here in this little old mobile home park nestled up in the Virginia mountains.
Well, I think I've packed all I want to pack for today. I've cleared out the TV stand and removed all the decorations off the walls. The house is going to be cluttered with boxes for a few weeks while we pack, and it's going to look messy, but that's okay. Pack boxes means we're one step closer to living on our own homestead, and I can't wait. All right, my house plant has outgrown its pot, and it's starting to get root bound. So I picked up a bigger pot and a small bag of potting soil at Dollar General, so I'm going to head outside and repot my plant. never really had a green thumb so I'm quite surprised at how healthy this plant looks. I'm not sure what kind of plant it is but whatever it is it's very hardy. I bought it a year ago at the local grocery store. I placed it up on this shelf and that's where it stayed the whole last year. I just made sure to water it at least once a week and that's all I've done. I suppose it probably needs some plant food but otherwise it has really thrived and grown so much so fast. I'm kind of worried about removing the fiddle leaf fig tree. It's also gotten pretty tall this past year. It's a three hour drive to the new house and I'm worried that the fig tree will get broken. Any suggestions on how to move it will be greatly appreciated. Well, look at that. I finished just in time. Tim took his mom out shopping today and they've just made it back home. They went to Ollie's because Tim had a coupon that he wanted to use, and we liked getting his mom out of the house a few times a week, so it was the perfect excuse to go shopping. I sent them to the store for laundry detergent, fabric softener, and bleach, but wait till you see what they came back with. Oh, he got the fabric softener and detergent, but also so much more. Tim and his mom have a major sweet tooth, and Granny must have found the chocolate aisle because they stocked up on sweets. He also bought a reclining camp chair. We thought his mom would enjoy using it on the porch at the new house, so she'll have a more comfortable place to sit besides her wheelchair while we're working on the renovations. We also have a rocking chair, and we're bringing the reclining portion of our couch, so she'll have lots of options to keep her comfortable.
Okay, let's see. I've packed up the living room. I repotted my house plant. And we had a little mini sweets haul from Ollie's. So now I'm going to bake a coffee cake for dessert tonight. I'm still working on my pantry challenge. I'm trying to clear out the pantry as much as possible. I don't want to have to move a ton of canned vegetables and soup to the new house. Today I was looking in the pantry trying to see what I could use up for dessert. And I knew I had a yellow cake mix but no frosting. So I did a Google search for yellow cake mix recipes and found a recipe for a cinnamon coffee cake. I had everything on hand for the recipe except brown sugar. We ran out last week, but I remembered that you can make homemade brown sugar out of granulated sugar and molasses. For light brown sugar, you will use one cup sugar and one tablespoon molasses, but for darker brown sugar, just add more molasses. I was skeptical at first that it wouldn't taste good, but it's actually very delicious. I made enough brown sugar for the coffee cake and for the sweet potatoes that we're going to have with dinner. So if you're ready, let's bake a coffee cake. I found this recipe on dashofsanity.com. According to their website, they define coffee cake as a sweet, dense cake with a cinnamon sugar crumb topping. The recipe calls for yellow cake mix, eggs, canola or vegetable oil, I only have peanut oil, so that's what I'm going to be using. It also calls for water, instant vanilla pudding mix, vanilla extract, brown sugar, and cinnamon. So I got started by preheating the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and then I made the cinnamon brown sugar topping. I then mixed all the other ingredients for the cake for approximately 7 minutes to allow the pudding mix to set up. Once the cake is made and mixed for 7 minutes, I'll then pour half of the batter into a greased casserole dish. Next, I'll sprinkle half of the cinnamon brown sugar mix over the cake batter, and then I'll pour in the remaining batter and sprinkle with the remaining sugar topping. The cake will bake in the oven for approximately 25 to 35 minutes.
I have to tell you what, this was one of the easiest desserts I've ever mixed together. The cake mix makes it so simple and easy. So while the cake mix is baking in the oven, I'm going to clean up my mess and wash the dishes I just dirtied up. Tim and I have both had our fair share of hand washing dishes, and we are determined to figure out a way to install a dishwasher in the new house. One way or another. It is definitely a must have for our new kitchen. In fact, we've already been shopping for a dishwasher, but we're not quite ready to buy it just yet. The kitchen renovation probably won't start until the fall. This summer, we're focusing on Granny's bedroom and our youngest son's room. As soon as we finish those two rooms, then we'll start on the kitchen. Max is a two-year-old coon hound, but he acts like a toddler. He loves cuddles and sitting in your lap, and he loves to take naps. When he wakes up, he always needs a snuggle to get up and get going. The sweet boy, he gives the best hugs. Well, the house is filling up with the sweet smell of cinnamon, and it smells delicious. It won't be long now before the coffee cake will be ready to come out of the oven. Why, hi, Milo. How are you doing today? Wow, what a beautiful day it is. It's a gorgeous day in late spring here in the Virginia mountains. It's just about dinner time, and we need to get the charcoal started to grill the steaks. I'm also in the mood to sit beside the fire, so Tim's going to build one for me in the fire pit. It's nice and warm out right now, but once the sun starts to set, it cools down quite a bit. So it would be nice to sit by the fire and enjoy the beautiful view one last time before we move.
We are preparing the charcoal to grill the steaks. We've been wanting to grill some steaks for a while now, but as you all know, beef is crazy expensive at the moment. Tim went shopping for steaks the other day, but the steaks were $15 a pound. And Tim said, nope, absolutely not. He wasn't about to spend that much money on steaks. But on Memorial Day, he found New York strips on sale for $10 a pound, so he splurged and bought them for the holiday. Unfortunately, it rained on Memorial Day, but today is gorgeous and perfect for a cookout. Tim is using Royal Oak Hardwood Lump Charcoal to grill the steaks with. I suppose we could have grilled the steaks on the fire pit, but we went ahead and decided to light the grill and start a fire so we can enjoy them both. This is by far one of my favorite ways to pass the time, sitting by a fire and enjoying the beautiful scenery. I really will miss this view. We rented this mobile home sight unseen, so we had no idea what to expect. So imagine our surprise when we saw this huge yard with the mountains in the background. I fell in love from day one, and as much as I'll miss it, it's time to move on and discover all the wonderful things that our own piece of paradise has to offer. But first, let's grill some steaks. Tim scraped the grill off to clean it, and now he's going to add some oil to the grill. He's using an onion with the top sliced off with a fork stuck in it, and then he's dipping it in the oil and rubbing it all over the grill. This will help prevent the steaks from sticking to the grill. Alright, who's ready to grill some steaks?
don't they look delicious? This was my first time grilling steaks over charcoal. Tim usually does the grilling, but he let me hold the tongs tonight. Of course, he was sitting right there coaching me the whole way. I didn't want to ruin the steaks by burning them or cooking them too long, and it looks like they turned out perfect. The thicker ones are medium rare, and the thinner ones are cooked to medium. They were actually some of the most tender, juiciest steaks I've had in a long time. In fact, Tim is at the store right now as I'm editing this video to go get more steaks, but only if they're on sale. y'all i'm gonna go ahead and get dinner served up and call the boys in to eat we're having new york strip steaks sweet potatoes and broccoli and then for dessert later we're having the coffee cake that i made and i tell you what we're ready to dig in I tell you what, this was one of the most delicious meals that we've had in a while. We've been eating a lot of hot dogs, hamburgers, and pork lately, so it was nice to enjoy a nice steak dinner with the family. You know, we used to be able to get away with one steak per kid, but now they're getting so big and strong, and they have big appetites. They definitely wanted more than one steak, that's for sure. Well, dinner's over, and everyone is scattered back to their rooms to play more video games. They only have a couple more days to enjoy their high-speed gaming. We're headed back to the new house next week, and we don't have Wi-Fi there yet, so no more video games for a while. So it looks like it's just me and Milo enjoying the great outdoors. But that's okay. It's their summer vacation, and I want them to enjoy it as much as possible.
We are getting Milo ready for his big move to the new house. Milo is a stray cat that showed up on our front porch last fall, and he was just the sweetest little boy ever. It turns out he had a family that moved away from the trailer park, but he got left behind. We started feeding him and taking care of him, and he's been here ever since. He's so cute. When I come outside and I call his name, he almost always comes running from wherever he is around the trailer park. We had him neutered recently, and while he was under anesthesia, they had to shave his tail. He had gotten into oil or tar or something sticky that was stuck in his tail fur. I had tried to bathe him a couple of times to try to remove whatever it was, but he wasn't having it. So the vet shaved his tail. I think it looks really cute, but it's already growing back, so don't worry. I just wanted to let y'all know what happened to his hair on his tail, just in case anyone was wondering. sitting out by the fire with Tim, but now it's time to clean up the kitchen so we can have some dessert. I'm just going to clean up the counter and put the leftovers away, and then we're going to have a little taste test with the coffee cake that I made.
All right, y'all, who's ready for dessert? All I can smell is cinnamon sweetness, and I can't wait to dig in. My goodness, y'all. This coffee cake is so moist on the inside and crunchy on the outside. It tastes so good. The homemade brown sugar worked out perfectly. Tim is so funny. When I told him I was making a coffee cake, he said, nope, not for me. You know I don't like coffee. So I had to inform him there's absolutely no coffee in the cake. That's just what it's called, silly. All right, y'all. I guess that's it for another video. We're going to finish our dessert and then wash the dinner dishes and call it a night. I really hope y'all enjoyed the video and I can't wait to talk to you on my next one. I'll talk to you later. Bye.